Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Feels great to see the response for today's session. Your presence here is more of a stamp on the importance of language enhancement in our lives. Language is an integral part of communication and plays a crucial role as a catalyst to help express thoughts and visions. A very warm welcome to you for the live webinar on language enhancement in PYP. On behalf of Vishwashanti Gurukul and IB World School, this is Ms. Ashwini, the moderator for the day. I would like to thank each one of you for giving us your Saturday morning. To begin with, let me introduce the speakers for the day. We have with us early years facilitator, Ms. Dimple, PYP3 facilitator, Ms. Sophia, and PYP4 facilitator, Ms. Paromita. And of course, we have the entire team of PYP teachers and Principal Rama Ma'am. We would like to extend our gratitude to Mr. Venu Gopal sir for his constant support and motivation. The agenda for today's webinar is significance of language learning, process of language development in PYP and strategies used for language enhancement. Now, before I hand over to our speakers, let me give you a brief outline of the significance of learning the language, learning about the language, and learning through the language. So what is the nature and importance of language? The relationship between language arts and literacy skills is reciprocal in nature and changes over time. Young children learn about reading. They need reading to help them learn about writing, and they need oral language to help them learn about both. It's not new for us that language is the primary basis of all communication. We all know language learning is an active process that begins at birth and continues through life. So what's interesting is language development is continuous and recursive. Our students enhance their language learning as they reflect upon and use prior knowledge to extend and enhance their language and understanding. It's very important to note that language learning is a shared responsibility. All our students can be successful learners only when the responsibility for language learning is shared by students, parents, teachers, and the community as a whole. Did you know? that thinking and learning through language happens simultaneously? Yes, thinking, learning, and language are interrelated. From early years one to PYP five, students use language to make sense of and bring order to their world in a formal setup. Lastly, we must believe that students' language development is integral to their success in every area in school. Language enables PYP students to play an active role in various communities of learners within and beyond the classroom. As the students speak, write and represent, they also listen to, read and view the ideas and experiences of others. Critical and creative thinking are and learning through language occur when students reflect, speculate, create, analyze, and synthesize. In addition, language enables our students to develop metacognition, that is, it enables them to reflect upon and control their own learning and learning processes. Finally, at the end of PYP5, students become competent and confident users of all six language arts, through many opportunities given to them to enhance the literacy skills in PYP. Let us now listen to what our speakers have to say in addition while answering a few burning questions that the new age parents have. First question is based on language proficiency. The term proficiency is used a great deal in the modern global world. So my first question is for Ms. Paromita. What are the various ways PYP teachers use to bring proficiency in the language in Gurukul? 
Uh, a very good morning to one and all. And thank you, Ashwini, ma'am, for such a relevant question. Now, language is the major connecting element across the curriculum. Therefore, in Gurukul, the focus is not only on language for its own sake, but also on its application across the subjects and throughout the transdisciplinary program of inquiry. The learning process simultaneously involves learning language. It means learners listen to and use language with others in their everyday lives. You can see over here in this slide. Early year learners show an understanding that the world around them is full of visual language that conveys meaning. They are able to interpret and respond to visual texts. Although much of their own visual language is spontaneous, they are extending and using visual, visual language in more purposeful ways. The next important thing is learning about language. That means learners grow in their understanding of how language works. At the end of year five, learning outcome mainly consists of grammatical convention and writing skill development. Let us see some samples of students' works. Now the first image, Through this activity, uh, Rina, ma'am, please go to the first slide. The second one. Yes, here. Through this activity, the first image, through this activity, students understood the difference between abstract nouns and adjectives to describe a character. And of course, not to miss their artistic presentation skill. And the next image is of a story writing. Students first understood the elements of a story, and then this is the outcome of our little authors. Next, we have the first image. The students read a comprehension passage on Henry Ford, and then identified different kinds of nouns and placed them in a tabular form. And the next image shows how dictionary skills are developed. And for the last image, a few verbs were provided and few were chosen by students and they were asked to write a story by using them in past tense. It showcases their creative thinking skill as well. Going further, we have this one. How nice, making a cartoon and development of dialogue writing skills as well. And the third image is of recount writing. Children use the framework to write about how I celebrated my Diwali. And the last one is of summary writing. Now we have come to the most important one, learning through language. When learners use language as a tool to listen, think, discuss, and reflect on information, ideas, and issues. This is the transdisciplinary approach of learning. It is actually the language acquisition happening during the unit of inquiry. It involves listening, speaking, viewing, presenting, reading, and writing of oral language, visual language, and written language tracks. Let's have a look at some wonderful works of students. Now the slide shows at the end of year five, students write journals for their exhibition purpose. They are ready to frame their own key questions, decide the mode of presentation, write their success stories, and of course, they all come out with flying colors. Now, now the next one. The best example of transdisciplinary learning, how learners are using the language conventions to present their thinking routines. The first one. Claim support question on whether robots can be used in national security. The second one, representation of national security through compass point. And the last one, representation of human trafficking through CSI, that means color, symbol, and image. Some more examples in the next slide. The first one, procedural writing. Now, this is generally integrated with science units. Students learn to from hypothesis, frame research question, 
and write the procedure of the experiment. The second one is the perfect example of creative writing. The students wrote the letter to COVID-19 Yodha to thank them from the core of their heart. Children have posters to spread awareness. Now you only tell us, our students are really creative, aren't they? Now going further, we have in the next slide, advertisements. Students created the advertisements of their own products and this school. So our learners are ready to give a tough competition to professional copywriters. They make brochures. And just have a look at the last one, cyberbullying connected to psychology. It is a perfect example of creative writing using the critical thinking skill. I hope you all like what our students do. Actually, we have a caring language community in which all students feel accepted and confident that they will be supported by others in language learning and in taking risks. We support students during the communication process and provide the missing bits when students cannot fully express their meaning. And this is often referred to as scaffolding. Thus, effective language learning and teaching are social acts dependent on relationships with others, with context, with the environment, with the world, and of course, with the self. And such learning is relevant, engaging, challenging, and significant. Thank you so much, Ms. Paromita. To conclude, it is true that the more you try to speak or use the language, the more you will naturally grow and naturally improve. Just by using the language as much as possible, the fluency will rapidly develop. I would like to now turn to Ms. Dimple. Language acquisition is the process by which humans acquire the capacity and gain the ability to be aware of language and to understand it as well as to produce and use words and sentences to communicate. So Ms. Dimple, what is the PYP approach towards acquisition of language in Gurukul? Good morning, Ms. Ashwini. I was expecting this question to pop up. Actually, our approach towards the acquisition of language determines the success of the student's academic performance, especially when the language is to be adopted as the medium of instruction by the school. The first language that is introduced to our tiniest students is English. There are many ways a new language can be learned or taught. We also know that drawbacks are there in each program. Thus, we adopt a collaborative approach to frame our whole school language policy. And then we work on the vertical and horizontal phase-wise learning. In PYP, we believe in pragmatic, communicative, and naturalistic approach in the early years and add analytic and metacognitive challenges to it as the students progress in the primary years. Any language that we wish to learn comes with its own culture and flavor. So in the first phase, we initiate the learning process. We do it by appealing to the soul, the enjoyable part of the language that is listening and speaking. We let the little ones listen to and sing the action song sing along with stories, have celebrations, events, to let them love their own voice as they learn to practice speaking an acquired language. There is a song or a story for everything. They go for nature walks, exploring, examining, and learning to name things they see. Sometimes they even carry it back to the class for further inquiry. The environment is created to support and provoke them to question. We let them live and experience the language so that they start thinking in the given language instead of just translating. You can see some of the images being flashed. So these are some of the ways we uh, incorporate language. Expression through stories, songs, letting the students interact with familiar and unfamiliar people, presenting their learning. And of course, a lot of focus is on social and emotional learning. As the language becomes a medium of communication, 
the students are made aware of the socially acceptable language also. So learning a language can take immense cognitive efforts. And when students study languages, it's often restricted to grammar, extensive vocabulary, tons of rules, and the dreadful reading portion. Well, that all is not for us. We learn it to broaden our horizon. Reading a book along with the students can connect them to their own culture, to understand and open their minds towards others, traditions, life, festivities, enhance empathy, values. We sharpen their skills to explore the language through the language as Ms. Poromita has spoken about. The best thing about kids is that they absorb the language real fast. As they grow in their journey, they learn the usage of language, the purpose of language. Here begins their connection with the books for reading, research, and also independence to learn further. Frequently used words are practiced and displayed for supporting the students in their learning journey. By now, the students become familiar with the language and are ready to handle the skeleton. The skeleton, that is the grammar part with its infinite rules. The good news is it doesn't scare them anymore. It's not a burden for them anymore. Actually, it helps them to understand, analyze, think critically and question. In this phase, we let them understand the difference between response and reaction, action and consequence, as they need to know how to use the knowledge of language and skills developed so far. They learn to reflect, discuss, debate, analyze, contextualize the content and they, that they have read, heard, watched, and even the experiences. The students understand the different purposes the language could come in handy. Thus learning takes a practical and purposeful approach. Here the facilitators play an important role. The learning engagements they plan generates enthusiasm among the students and broaden and deepen their thinking and understanding. Be it a book fair, reading event, or time to make smoothies and cakes and share the recipe or have a pajama party. The interaction among the students is like a booster shot for language skills. The language is learned with joy in PYP and becomes a part of our life. Nothing to be stressed about. After all, after all, its aim is to communicate, understand and share. And our students turn out to be excellent communicators. I hope that answers your question, Ms. Ashwini. For sure, for sure, Ms. Dimple. And uh, uh, let me just sum this up. So we understand that language pragmatics aren't acquired immediately. This process is ongoing until the age of approximately 10 years and continues beyond as well. So thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Coming to you, Ms. Sophia, there are a number of ways to support or scaffold instruction for language learners, even if they are at the beginning levels of English proficiency. These ideas from veteran educators can help make content more accessible and provide students with an opportunity to participate in all classroom activities. So how do the PYP students in Gurukul use different tools and strategies in language learning? Good morning, Ms. Ashwini. Such an important question you have asked. I was wondering if it would come up. Human beings are tool makers. As teachers, we seek to find tools to make work easier, to utilize techniques to engage students with active in-depth learning. In Gurukul, we ensure that students across the grade span are able to practice their language skills. A rich language environment supplies them with the tools and strategies they need to further develop their spoken and written language abilities. Before initiating any strategy, a sample model is presented, explained with a criteria chart, and then the student is guided accordingly. 
The next slide shows you the learning in early years. Children are provided with opportunities to learn alphabetic symbols, letter sound relationships, basic sight vocabulary, comprehension strategies, and also the reading of stories designed for young children. They learn naming objects, singing songs, reciting poems, picture reading, simple comprehensions, sequencing stories, etc. as you can see in the slide. Going further, in PYP 1 to 3, young children learn how to express themselves through written language, to identify sounds, to form letters, words, sentences, and text structures, and to learn how to put together a written story. They further develop their language abilities through recitation, narration, object talk, retelling a story, and a lot more as seen in the slide. Next, we have PYP 4 and 5, where students learn to ask appropriate questions with right construction. They are able to read texts, handouts, comprehensions, report writing, reflections, case studies, and biographies. They are able to give speeches, participate in persuasive talk, take interviews, and a lot more. Just take a look at the topics we cover. Wow, what a rich package it is. Some of the classroom strategies we use are scaffolding. Under scaffolding, scaffolding is basically uh, breaking up the learning into parts and providing a tool or structure with each part. So under scaffolding, we have show and tell. Here the learner created a booklet about healthy habits and presented it to her friend. Use of visual aids. Graphic organizers, pictures, and charts can all serve as scaffolding tools. Here we have the students working in a group on a Y chart in which they had to find why, how, and what is the purpose of making a portfolio. And in the other picture, students have represented each learner profile with themselves through a visible thinking routine, color, symbol, and image. In the next slide, Using the Venn diagram, the student had written the differences and similarities between natural and man-made sources of light. In the second image, the student has differentiated between rights and responsibilities on a T-chart. And in the third picture, after learning adjective words, the student has des described herself through a pictionary. Next, we have encoding. When children are encoding words, they are able to recognize and understand that the sounds made from those words are separate. Here, through the process of encoding words, the student has made reading cards. In the next picture, which is listen, imagine, and draw, the student listens to the teacher's instructions, imagines, and then draws her understanding. After this, we have mind map. Here, the student had to use the five W's and one H to understand, reflect, and map all about my responsibilities. Next picture is mirror talk. Looking into a mirror, using adjective words, the students had to describe themselves. Going further, reader's theater. Reader's theater helps readers learn to read aloud with expression, it helps build reading confidence. Through a role play, students learn to express themselves and to describe the features used in the communication tool. In the next picture, students did a role play of pirates in the unit of exploration. We also have Think, Ink, Pair and Share, which comes under instructional writing. Students collaborated together in pairs and came up with their own school rules. Let's take a look at the next slide. Illustration. Students illustrated the story sun, moon, and stars in their own way. In the second image, students drew symbols that best represented the attributes of IB learner profiles. Beautiful, isn't it? There are many more ways to learn that by, than by telling. 
2500 years ago, Confucius understood that learning is an active process. He reminds us of that concept by scripting the following adage. What I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. And what I do, I, I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia, ma'am. I lost track. I lost count of all the strategies that Gurukul teachers use for PYP children. And how true are those words of Confucius? Interesting to know that learning, that language acquisition involves structures, rules, representation, and is the foundation for a multitude of other skills, such as vocabulary, writing structure, and other text-based skills. Now, moving on to reading, Ms. Dimple, independent reading includes any reading students do on their own, in or outside of the classroom. It's proven that independent readers usually become very high achieving students. So how does language learning in PYP support in making students independent readers in Gurukul? Uh, taking it further, Ms. Ashwini, I'd like to say that we believe in letting the students acquire the skills to listen and speak first. And this is also done using a variety of strategies and learning engagements, as Ms. Sophie has already spoken about. The students learn to observe nature, know their surroundings, and play games, wherein they communicate with friends and create vocabulary for their usage. The facilitators further scaffold this knowledge by providing them with books, starting from picture cards to picture books, to realistic fiction, to newspaper for kids that can be seen in each class library. Now, the interaction with the books starts early, thus making it something like a water bottle in our PYP and essential for us. The students learn the skill to decode and encode through an inquiry-based phonic program in the early years and sight words are introduced to them as they begin to form simple sentences. The students learn skills to decode, thus making 80% of the words within their reading capacity. As we introduce each letter through a story, a song or play, the love for listening, reading and telling a story grows in them. We use a variety of books and self-expression engagements to, uh, you can say, uh, give, enhance the imagination and observation skills for the students. Most of our learning happens through books. Take an example of a book the early years love to read, The Very, the Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. Through this story, the students learn about the life cycle of a butterfly, days of the week, counting objects, naming all the food that the caterpillar ate. They learn to draw, paint, sing, dance, do role play, and learn to sequence the event how the caterpillar has grown. So in this way, when the learning takes place, the books are there in the hands of the children. They are like, Early morning, as they enter the classrooms, the first thing that most of the kids go for are books. The books are kept on the table for them to explore. So they, this becomes a habit. Now this habit continues as each unit that we do needs loads of resource material. And we have a preferred source of learning that is books. The selection of books based on reading levels, thus letting the children choose something that provides them with a bit of challenge. The love for books is developed through reading. One second. Love for books is developed through reading. Facilitators and letting them know thus leading them not only into reading more, but also giving them that skill to research too. 
it is very important to select a good book stories that appeal to the students and give rise to a multitude of perspectives books should be read for fun thought provoking ideas surprises humor drama group responses that's when when we enjoy the language as a whole package when you begin to enjoy the language you begin to read a lot please make it a habit to read a book along with your child parents it helps to stay connected and your child will never feel lonely thank you thank you miss dimple and uh, i love the analogy of the water bottle and uh, the essential um, importance of reading so uh, audience miss dimple's clear message to everybody is that the best way to develop reading is basically to make sure that the student will read every day as a routine miss sophia turning to writing which is a complex skill it forms it's an important form of communication and a key part of education but in today's technology driven world kids aren't given many opportunities to practice and improve their ability to write this leaves many parents wondering how to improve their child's writing skills so how do teachers in pyp develop students writing and creative writing skills in gurukul thank you Ash ashwini ma'am for such a relevant and interesting question now let's ponder upon why is writing skills and creative writing skills important for students writing helps to improve intellectual skills creative writing also develops creative thoughts using their imaginations suggesting alternatives broadening their thought process and problem solving abilities in gurukul we introduce the writing process which involves various stages which is pre writing drafting revising editing and publishing as we introduce students to different text types we discuss the purpose of writing text structure and language features Let's take a look at some of the writing text types we guide students in Gorokhpur. Well, writing starts with tracing different patterns. Here we can see an early learner tracing on the given lines. Going further, the student learns sentence formation. In the next slide, we have here the student is listening to a word and mapping letters to all the sounds he hears. the student learns to identify the sounds associated with individual letters in the context of whole words going to the next slide dictation and vocabulary building we have vocabulary building through many ways in the first picture students were shown images and they had to identify and write the correct spellings on a mind map in the next picture they had they had to correct the jumble words and in the third picture the student had to write down the things around his house in alphabetical order let's take a look at the next slide story comprehension here the student reads the story and answers the given questions the questions are reflective application based and rewriting in own words going further let's take a look at summary writing and handwriting here a passage was dictated and students had to write it neatly in their notebooks skills developed are listening and writing and spellings retelling a story a retelling is remembered events from a story heard orally here the student retells his story in his own words in the next slide we have poem writing here the child has conveyed her thoughts through a poem written by her, her named as my own plant story writing here the student has written a fairy tale on the queen and the monster skills developed are to express discover record develop reflect reflect on ideas and to problem solve next we have letter writing The first image as is an informal letter written by a student to his teacher on teachers day. 
Descriptive writing. The student has described the importance of compliments here. Let's take a look at the next slide. Informative writing. Here the students have made a PPT with information about different kinds of topics such as snakes and dogs and many more. Diary writing. In this image, the students maintain a diary in which they reflect about things that they have been doing during the day and things that they've learned during the day. In the next slide, we have reflection writing. In this image, the student has reflected on her own learning journey. In procedural writing, the student has written about the effect of force on shape, direction, position, motion, size of objects in a step-by-step -step format. World of books. Your students took initiative to create their own informative books and create an e-library. Fascinating, isn't it? There's a lovely quote by Joss Whedon. Self strength. I write to be the characters that I am not. I write to explore all the things I'm afraid of. Kids can change the world. All they need is a little inspiration. Thank you. Thank you for the details, Ms. Sophia. It takes time to develop strong writing skills and it can be a tough task to accomplish. Thankfully, there are many things that PYP teachers uh, do to help improve the children's writing skills. Well, we know by now that reading plays a vital role in the medium of communication. Another vital role of reading skills in communication is perfecting your oratory skills, thus helping one to become a leader. Lastly, we know that good communicators are good leaders. So, Ms. Paromita, how are the PYP students in Gurukul encouraged to become public speakers or communicators? Thank you, Ashwini, ma'am, for such an interesting question. Now, oral language is the is one of the foundational building blocks of learning. Having successful communication skills leads to better social relationships. For any conversation, knowing when to speak and when to listen is essential. In Gurukul, we follow certain techniques which are very helpful for developing children's oral skills. We end first and foremost, we encourage conversation. Every social interaction gives students a new opportunity to practice language. Some of our students might need a little guidance from us to engage in conversations. So we spark interactions whenever we can, asking questions, rephrasing the students' answers, and giving prompts, encourage or not use complete oral syntax so we remind students to speak loudly. We remind them that clear and loud enough speech is essential for holding the attention of the group and communicating their information and opinions effectively. Questions to boost comprehension. Asking questions before and after reading, after a reading assignment not only helps sharpen oral language skills, it also helps students think about what they're reading and absorb information from the words. More active role of students, which is very, very important. When students play a more active role in class and in their education, they learn faster, better, and with better attitude. The simple act of letting them talk more will boost their spirits. And this is exactly what happens in our Gurukul classrooms. Preparation is the key. Learners need to be given time to prepare before a discussion. This thinking time is structured, teaching our students to think before they speak. And the most important thing is providing opportunities. We provide a lot of opportunities where students are able to showcase their speaking skills like conduction of service, taking interviews, presentation of students' work, school assembly, object talk, jam, just immunization, role plays, unit celebrations, debate, and ultimately PYP exhibition presentation. 
Last but not the least, excitement is contagious and showing our students that we are happy to be with them and guide them always make a difference in how they view their class. When they see how excited and happy we are to be teaching them, they become happier and more excited to learn from us. Indeed. Thank you so much, Ms. Paromita. It's so aptly said by Simon Sinek, great leaders communicate and great communicators lead. We as teachers and you as parents have to work in partnership for the language enhancement of the students. Here are a few tips from Gurukul to guide you to do so at home. Watch movies at, in English. It helps you to understand the language better. Get used to the colloquial conversational forms of English and implicitly get a feeling for the language. Immerse your family in English language news. Try to sample a broad range of English language newspapers and watch English news on TV. Start a vocabulary book of useful words. Either in a notebook or on your computer, start making a list of useful words and phrases that your child comes across. Every time he or she hears a word or sees a word that they are not familiar with, note it down. Keep a bank of quotes. Every time you and your word comes across a quote, keep a note of it along with the author. Have conversations in English. As helpful as listening and reading tasks may be, you also need to use English interactively and practice your own speaking skills with your words. Read, 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 and read some more with your word. Read in front of your word. Read while traveling. Read during free time. Read before sleeping. Read as a recreational activity. We all know that children follow by example. We can never undermine the benefits of reading daily. And it is so truly said that the habit of reading is developed on the lap of a parent. Lastly, surround your family with English. It's only when the children start knowing more about the new vocabulary and that every thing, feeling, concept has a name Will they develop the interest in knowing more? Here, usage and application is very important. Thinking in the language is a key to language enhancement. With this, we come to the end of the session. Before we close, I would like to draw your attention to the documents that we refer to while framing the English curriculum at Vishwashanti Gurukul. The IB has prescribed the language scope and sequence document, which every IB school must follow to frame their own curriculum. We have the PYP language scope and sequence customized to the needs of our students and in line with the IB standards and practices. We also keep referring to the language policy, which is reviewed every year by the entire school. For reference and record, dear parents, you will find all these documents on ManagePack. We are also in the process of building a language profile for our students as per the IB requirements. The aim of the profile is to give teachers an overview of the student's language level and history, as well as build up a picture of the student's use of English and other languages outside of school. We would like to now keep the session open for the next 10 minutes for questions, and feedback, please. Yes, so uh, I have got a question here and seems to be very interesting. Um, how will I know about the level of language proficiency of my ward? So dear parents, PYP has regular assessments for English under the name Let's Recap, which the children have already finished for this current academic year. The first Let's Recap is done. The language art skills in each recap are individually assessed on a rubric, which has a range of scores from one to seven. If one is individual, we move on to basic, normal, consistent, enhanced, enriched, and outstanding, which becomes number seven. 
So if your ward is three above, you really don't have to worry much about him or her because they're on a progressive learning continuum. But if your ward is struggling below three, then definitely it is a red flag and needs to be addressed. For such students, we have differential learning, we have remedial teaching and one-to-one -one tutoring within the school hours. I hope it, this answers your question. The second question which uh, we have is, what reading resources would you recommend for my ward? So we use the reading resources which are approved by IB. We usually refer to real books for reading and our library is rich with a variety of books of all genres. Now that we are online, we have resorted to Scholastic, Unite for Literacy, African Literature, Pearson, Oxford Tree, Epic Series, etc. We would recommend the students to make a trip to a crossword bookstore at least once in six months and visit the British Council Library too once the lockdown is relaxed. Thank you for your questions. If I may move forward, a big, big thank you to all the speakers for educating us about the process of language enhancement in PYP. Thank you audience for your time. This is Ashwini, PYP coordinator, Vishwashanti Gurukul, signing off and closing the webinar for today. Thank you so much.